at the intersection of healthcare and technology, podcasting has emerged as an effective tool for marketing and audience engagement. Now, have you ever wondered how to make your healthcare podcast stand out? It's all about connecting in a smart and meaningful way. Now, many people do podcasting, and we consider them as the hobby and not truly using them professionally to hurt your connections, your listeners, into your next client. Whether you're just starting out or you are an established company, some of the keywords that increasingly in search engines is podcast marketing and client and content repurposing as the go-to keywords for marketing strategy. So today we're going to explore what are the overall podcasting strategy you can use to make podcast your primary marketing asset. Welcome to Providers Edge, the podcast that helps healthcare entrepreneurs and innovators break down barriers and control their business, life, and future with valuable action steps. With me, your host. Sabrina Rombach, a recovered clinician and a business deal catalyst. Let's rewrite the rules and create a positive social impact while increasing your profitability. Searches for how healthcare podcasts for client conversion and budget-friendly podcasting marketing strategy for health tech company review just how crucial podcasting have been for business growth. Think about your podcast as a cozy gathering of a spot where healthcare innovation leaders and yourself are sharing stories and strategies and insights over coffee. Now, because you are in someone else's pocket and in their ear all the time. It is evergreen content. It's not just a quick, fun conversation. It needs to be very insightful and strategically planned out for your calendar for the next few weeks, two months even. It's more than just talking. It's about creating a space where people come together to learn and feel part of something that's bigger. And it's about you creating a big movement that ultimately becoming a community of raving fans. And any business stage is all about that community building. It's how people can stand behind your true brand. And that brand is actually a big mission. And your mission is so big that you have to create a company for your podcast can be a powerful tool to engage your community and transform listeners truly become your clients. So let's take your podcast beyond the individual episodes and let's make it a central part of your marketing and content creation, pulling the right crowd and nurturing your business growth. So welcome to today's episode from content to clients. Here, we'll show you how to make your podcast the heartbeat of your marketing, waving together compelling stories, as well as practical advice, taking your audience engaged and invested. All right, so our major three takeaway for this episode are, number one, podcasting is a powerful tool for marketing and audience engagement in healthcare and technology industry. Number two. Two, health tech companies can leverage podcasts to build genuine connections with potential clients and strategic partners. Number three, efficient workflow optimization and budget allocated for marketing are key consideration for maximizing the impact of your podcast efforts in the industry. All right, so let's explore why health tech companies are turning into podcasts. As the industry continues to evolve, we believe in creating innovation and being the forefront of change. And now how we market also needed to be the forefront of a new way of what do we believe to stand out in the online community and also physical community that we're all building. So digital health and health type companies are finding novel ways to also connect to their audience and their 
their strategic partners. One of such way is through podcasting because podcast has become more and more popular in the past few years. Although many people launch podcasts, guess what? Average they don't record more than ten episodes before getting up, knowing it's time consuming, it's costly, and they don't truly have a strategy to turn that into a marketing. Engine that have a specific workflow and process to actually get you to connect with clients and eventually property. And a study in a past showed from all the noises that we have outside in the community now, we're still losing the trust about where the information are coming from and how the information are disseminated. And guess what? Podcasting has been shown as the number one trust platform across all information, news distribution sites, and secondary to YouTube. Hmm, think about that. And the many people think YouTube is a search engine. Now, podcasts can be that powerful as well. Podcasts allow companies to truly have a conversation with clients and put that showcase. Your audience, these leaders in the industry, the innovators, the patients, the caregivers, or the uh, admin staff, where are you positioning yourself as the expert, and who do you truly need to engage with? And we cannot spread our audienceship very wide. We have to be very specific and niche now. Oh, if we're broad, are we helping everyone? That's not it, right? The more you can be very specific on who you need to support and engage, you can maximize the effort of your workflow and also cut down all the distractions. Because at any point, podcast production is not just feel good conversation, as we mentioned. There's the process of who to reach out, how do you engage with them, and then. What's the entire funnel looks like for that entire client journey going forward? And guess what? Majority of people that don't have a significant ROI in podcasting is because nothing of that sort is being built out. The only thing they have built is, oh, we have someone that helped us to launch and public our shows. Uh, just because you're publishing it, but if you're not using strategically, still not getting you. The ultimate ROI. However, to create successful podcasts, it's important to understand your audience. And in this case,、uh, for healthcare tech companies, digital health companies, the audience typically consists of the leaders because one of the biggest driver and go-to-market strategy for many of you is B to B. And these are the people who really are passionate about. Improving healthcare as a whole, and listening to 
specific ideas that they can adopt into their organization as well. And they're truly looking for those new t- solutions. And when creating podcast content, it's important to keep this audience in mind. And therefore, both yourself and your interviewees, those speakers on your show, has to be able to change the way that they speak and how they speak and what information you brought to while thinking they're talking directly to these healthcare leaders and not just, oh, we're sharing about this platform where we're sharing about this wearables. You have to think about what is the challenges these healthcare leaders or even individuals have and how is your solution able to adapt easily into the end users? And how is these listeners who are healthcare leaders able to facilitate that transition or adaptation? You have to be able to put these people at the forefront of when you create content, when you create anything really, right? Even from a product development standpoint. All right, so content should be informative, thought-provoking, and relatable, most for all, right? And it should provide insights and solutions that can help these leaders and innovators overcome the specific challenges. In addition to creating valuable content, it's also important to engage with your audience. Second thing is, it is truly an untapped potential for podcasting in the health tech market. Now, our company, we believe in podcasting has immersed potential. With the right strategies, business can leverage podcasts and build a loyal following. And it's something that can cut down a lot of your workflow with content creations, with engagement, which means some people are doing a very overwhelmingly. They have one team do social media content creation, planning out things and then how they write. And they have a totally separate team for their SEO blog creation. And then they have a whole separate team, perhaps for podcasting or just because they're doing an interview, they're not really thinking about the topic. Uh, they're thinking, oh, I have a team for social media, I have a team for my online blog, and then I have a, a separate team for just recording and production. But then why duplicate three different workflow and three different system? You should be really combining everything into that one system. And this is how we say beyond vanity metrics and truly have a real ROI of healthcare podcasting while creating much simpler way for you to grow and leverage this as your primary marketing tool and conversion tool. So what does that mean? Is any time you're recording, perhaps you have a dedicated day every month and you're recording all four episodes, if it's a weekly episode, and you can even dedicate all your people signing up to only show up that one day to record. So you're not have to worry about your travel schedules, your meeting schedule, your networking, all those 
other things. And now let's just say you only dedicate、uh, three to four hours every month to produce, and then you back and take take completely over. And how you become a true engine is now that one piece of content can then repurpose into two to three weeks of social media content. And because now you can chop it down with pulling out the right quotes and making carousel reels. Uh, carousel、uh, slides and really closely summarizing key points.、Uh, you can also do graphics. You can do short reels because we know people like the audio, video, visual, quick summary of things. And making sure you put your brand on it, right? Not just chat down a sixty second audio where people have no idea what this is coming from, and then you reroute that. And link it back to that long piece of content, as well as you, now your SEO team can take the transcription of that long form content, turn it into a blog on your site, and chop it down into shorter format that becomes a LinkedIn newsletter, and then chop down even shorter into a newsletter blast that can redirect into whether it's a LinkedIn or your long form content of that blog or podcast. And you can also do what build those into your nurturing paint, and because you're publishing, right? You you are a media expert at this point, so then you can use that for educational nurturing purposes for people perhaps who just initially getting to your email opt-in. Lots more that we can talk about, but what's the true? Metric that creates the ROI is actually not about your downloads, not about the views. It's how many people you're actually able to interview who are potential clients or potential strategic partners or actually existing clients. Those are the people that you need to have more conversation with. Now you have a platform and lever for them to actually come to you, not chase them. So the true ROI is how many of those conversation you can have. And how many of those are converting into a client? Now it's not just converting on the show; it's actually about building the relationship and having again a reason to have additional conversation going forward about what you can do for them. The second key point is from listeners to royal client building based on that grieving fan is you do have to establish a very clear mission that you're doing. Whether it's just the podcasting side or the whole company in general, everyone has to know what are you fighting for. If they don't, then they cannot be aligned to your highest purpose. And then often, when people initially hear you, it's almost like going on the first day. Seems very exciting. This is cool. Yeah, you're doing awesome stuff. But it seems like you can't get a second day because people have to wonder. Ah,、uh, it's good, but do I want to engage? Until you truly have that highest alignment, and people yourself know what you're fighting for, despite the difficult times, and knowing why other people should be jumping on the bandwagon with you to fight for the same fight, then we can truly create that loyal super fan. All right, now we talk about why in this episode.、Uh, overall, is that we wanted you to be able to offer something that's amazing. Strategically to build a community of strategic partners and potential audience, and your ROI is not on your downloads or even the reviews that you're getting, but truly the quality of the conversation that you're generating. And are people even coming to you? Because like me, people are coming to me to say, "Hey, Sabrina, I have been to listening your show and I've been reading about your post, and I would love to have a conversation, see how you can help our."、Uh, Should be able to use that metric as your ultimate ROI. All right, hundred percent. Here's to you building your super fan community. Thank you for tuning into Providers Edge podcast. We hope you enjoy our latest episode and found the insights and tips helpful. We'd love to hear your feedback on the show and learn what topics you like us to cover in the future. 
So please take a moment to leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform and let us know what you think. Your feedback is essential to help us improve the show and provide you with the content you need to take your healthcare business to the next level. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.